we know the system and surroundings can exchange energy using heat and using work. Let's look at an example here using some pool balls and a pool table. So let's say we have our cue ball, which is the white ball there, and we hit it with enough energy to give it five joules of kinetic energy. So it rolls along the table with five joules of kinetic energy, and it's going to hit the purple ball. And in the case of our first table here, the table is very new, um, so it's very smooth. And so as it's rolling along the table, it doesn't lose very much energy uh, to friction, to heat. Because if you, if you ever rubbed your hands together, you know when you have that friction, that energy that's lost, it turns into heat. And so we're only losing a little bit of energy in the form of heat as the ball rolls across the table, only half a joule. And so when it hits that purple ball, it gives the rest of its energy to the purple ball, and the purple ball goes uh, shooting across the table. And so our cue ball, which started with five joules of energy, ends with zero. It lost a half a joule in the form of heat, and it lost four and a half joules in the form of work work being the pushing of that purple ball. And so you can see each of those separate parts here. So we have four and a half from the kinetic energy and then the one half from heat. And so put those together using the equation from uh, the last video, this equation here. It was losing both of those. And so we have negative four and a half and negative one half gives us a total internal energy change of negative one, uh, negative five joules. What if we started the exact same way, but we're on a different pool table now? Now we are on an old table. It's seen better days. It's really rough. And so when we hit that cue ball, and it starts to roll across the table, instead of only losing a half a joule to the friction, we lose now three joules, more than half of the energy that it started with, uh, to the friction. Just needing to, to push the felt out of the way, essentially, as it moves along the table. And so when it hits the purple ball then, it's still going to lose all the rest of its energy, but it's only going to lose two joules to pushing the purple ball at that point. And so if we look at what happened here, it's very different from the first case. Now we lost two joules in the form of kinetic energy. We lost three in the form of uh, the heat being lost in, in, as fr in friction as it's moving across the table. But even though these two were very different from the last case. Notice that the internal energy is exactly the same. We started with five joules. We ended with zero joules. And so the change in the internal energy is negative five joules, which is exactly the same as it was over here. And again, this is because internal energy is a state function. If you start in the same way and end the same way, it does not care what happened in the middle. It doesn't care if you lost most of the energy to heat or if you lost most of it to uh, hitting the ball. It doesn't care. All it cares about is that in both cases, you started with five joules of energy and you ended with zero. So hopefully you can see here how we can take two non-state functions and when they're combined together, they give us a state function. So just to summarize here, um, in the previous billiard ball example, the change in the internal energy is the same for both cases, but the heat and the work are not. The rough table, you lost more energy to heat, uh, but uh, you lost less to kinetic energy hitting the purple ball and so you end up with the same amount and so the delta E 
is a state function depending only on how quickly the ball was moving at the beginning, which is how much energy it had, uh, and then how much it had after it collided, which was zero in both cases. All right, so we have uh, another example problem here. This is more of a, uh, a conceptual problem, no calculations for this one. So this says, identify each energy exchange as either heat or work, and determine whether the sign of the heat or work is positive or negative. Now, before you pause the video here to try and work this out yourself, um, I do want to make a couple quick points here. We are defining here the sign using what we talked about in the last video. So refer to this when you're trying to work out the sign. And also notice here that I have specified what your system is. Because if I don't specify what the system is, then there's no way to tell. Because again, that the sign is actually determined by what the system is. Because uh, like in the case of this first one here, just uh, for the sake of, of example, I'm not saying this is actually what's what's happening, but let's say um, the ice cube is the system, which, which it is, and let's say that it's negative. We find that the change in internal energy is negative. Well, if it was flipped, if the beverage was the system, then the change in internal energy wouldn't be negative, it would be positive, given that this, uh, we're pretending here that it's negative. Um, because again, I'm not, not saying that's correct, just as an example here. The, the system is really what determines whether the change is positive or negative. Um, so pay close attention to the fact that I have specified here for each of these what your system is. So think about, is my system losing heat or gaining heat? Or is my system doing work or having work done to it? So pause the video for just a second and try to work out for yourself. Um, whether they're exchanging heat or work, and whether or not it is positive or negative. All right, for this first one here, we have an ice cube melting and cooling the surrounding beverage, and we're stating that the ice cube is our system. So this is a heat exchange. Work is not necessarily being done here because there's nothing moving around, nothing is pushing anything or anything like that. So this is a heat exchange. It's just a temperature exchange, essentially. And so if we think about what's happening here, the ice cube is melting and it's cooling the surrounding beverage. If you think about the ice cube as giving cool, so to speak, to the stuff that's around it, you might be tempted to say, well, then this is negative. But it's actually positive. This is actually a positive change in the internal energy for the ice cube. It is gaining heat, which is actually what makes it melt. So the ice cube starts out very cold, and as it absorbs the heat from the beverage, the ice cube begins to melt. So this is actually a positive heat change for this system, which then, assuming everything else is held constant, it would be a positive internal energy change as well. So the second one here, we have a metal cylinder that's rolled up a ramp. The metal cylinder is our system. This is going to be work. We have something that is moving. Something is pushing the metal cylinder up the ramp which then also answers the second question, which is that this is positive work. If the metal cylinder is the system, something is moving it, something is doing work to the system, and so therefore that is positive work. Okay, so the last one here, steam condensing on skin, causing a burn. We're going to say the steam is our system. So the steam starts off very hot and it cools down. It is giving heat to the skin. That is actually what causes the skin to burn. So this is a negative heat difference for the steam.
Now again, you really have to concentrate and make sure that you're thinking in terms of what is my system? Is my system gaining heat or losing heat? In this case, the system is losing heat. That heat is going into your skin and causing you all kinds of problems. Um, but the steam itself is losing the heat. The steam is cooling down on your skin. So that is a negative heat change. So the steam is losing energy. It has a negative uh, energy change, a negative internal energy change. All right, one last question here uh, for this video, actually. This is kind of a wordy question, but in reality, it's actually fairly straightforward if you can look past all the, uh, the extraneous stuff. It says, the firing of a potato cannon provides a good example of the heat and work associated with a chemical reaction. A potato is stuffed into a long cylinder that is capped on one end and open at the other. Some kind of fuel is introduced under the potato at the capped end, usually through a small hole, and ignited. The potato then shoots out of the cannon, sometimes flying hundreds of feet, and the cannon emits heat to the surroundings. All right, all that was not terribly useful for us. Now's where the useful stuff starts. If the burning of the fuel performs 855 joules of work on the potato and produces 1422 joules of heat, what is E for the burning of the fuel? Note, a potato cannon, be, cannon can be dangerous and should not be constructed without proper training and experience. I actually find it kind of funny that they felt the need to include that disclaimer at the end. Like a student is going to read that and be like, oh, I know what I'm going to do this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, but I will second them. Don't burn a potato. Don't uh, make a potato gun unless you know what you're doing. Okay, so in the problem here, we're told that we have 855 joules of work, and we have 1,422 joules of heat, and we're asked to find E. I know it doesn't say delta E there, but that's what we are trying to find. And if I have those flipped, it doesn't actually matter. If you're just adding two things together, it doesn't matter which one you write down first. Okay, so the main question we need to answer here is, are these positive or negative? It doesn't say in the question, but it does say what the heat is going into and out of and what the uh, work is being done on. So. Uh, one thing that I actually don't really like about this question is that it does not specify what the system is. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you now the system is the fuel that is burning. Um, it's kind of tempting at the onset to try and make the potato the system, but that's not going to work. But we'll, we would never be able to answer the question because we don't know how much of that heat is going into the potato. So the fuel is our system. So given that, why don't you uh, pause the video for just a second and think about is the work positive or negative and is the heat positive or negative? So give that a thought. All right, if we look here, it says that the burning of the fuel performs 855 joules of work on the potato. So since the potato is not our system, the potato is the surroundings, then this is negative work. Our system is doing 855 joules of work on the potato. So because our system is doing the work on something else, it is negative. The heat it says that the burning of the fuel produces 1,422 joules of heat. Because that heat is being produced by our fuel burning, that heat is not going into our system. That is the heat being released by our system. And so this is actually also negative. So these are both negative, which means we have negative 855 joules plus negative 1422 joules. And so that is going to be uh, oops, 
Uh, would it be helpful if I typed it in my calculator correctly? Alright. Negative 2,277 joules. That would be the change in the internal energy for our fuel. Alright. We'll call it there for this video. In the next one, we're actually going to start talking about how we collect this data for ourselves. Because up to this point, all the data that we've uh, been working with has just been given to us. So we're going to start talking about how we actually can determine how much heat is moving into or out of a system doing the measurements ourselves. So we'll pick up there next time.